Welcome to the 17th episode of NPC, the series that aims to bring the unimportant NPCs from games to light. Let us dive right into the vast province of Cyrodiil in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. In episode 4 we looked at Tamika, the masterful vintner from Skingrad. Her greatest competition, also local to her, are the Cyrilli brothers, a pair of Breton winemakers that work fields opposite hers and produce, at their admission, a slightly less spectacular product. David is the less colourfully dressed of the two and spends more time outside in the fields, while Gaston works more in the town itself. Both are confident in their product and work hard to make it. Let us approach David. I'm David of Surely Brothers Vineyard. Gaston is my brother. From our vineyards come the finest wines in Tamriel. Better than Tamika's? Yeah, well, in all honesty, no. But our wines are very good, and much cheaper than Tamika's very fine product, I assure you. He's humble but not self-effacing. A sound stance. Gaston and I make great wines, reasonably priced. Skingrad has two great vintners, Tamika and Surely. I'll never say a word against Tamika's wines. Gaston says, I'm Gaston Cyrilli. Perhaps you've met my brother David. Together we are the Cyrilli Brothers Winery. Skingrad is the wine-producing capital of Tamriel. You must sample our local wines. You'll never taste better. The 415 vintages were particularly good. The 399, well, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, if you can find a bottle. Lovely. I hope I can find a bottle one day. Now, how do they go about their work? Both David and Gaston wake up at 6am. David immediately heads out to the field, with Gaston delaying home for one hour before doing the same. They work there tirelessly, raking and hoeing, until lunch at 1. David takes lunch at their house from 1 to 3, while Gaston stays on the fields and eats there. After this, David heads back to work in the fields out of town, while Gaston passes him into the city to work the smaller fields and presses behind their house. David takes dinner from 8 to 10 p.m. outside the walls. On filming, he walked to the barn structure above Tamika's fields to eat there, perhaps for a change of scenery. After that, he heads home. Gaston stops his work in the backyard at 8, but lingers around there until 11. Good day. Evening. Hello. I saw Ugak Gramogak earlier. Well, if it was Ugak, you can be sure she had some good animals. <laughs> they say that when you murder someone, the Dark Brotherhood comes, so I've heard. I understand the Fighters Guild is hiring new members. I hear you. I think Glathir is... Yes. What's the news from the other parts of Tamriel? Nothing I'd like to talk about. At this point, he joins his brother inside. They both do as they do, then head to bed at midnight to start their cycle afresh. The Cyrilli brothers' house is located on the southwestern side of town, opposite the street from the Two Sisters Inn and quite close to Selmo's home. It is a grand house of the Skingrad design, grey brick, tall and towering. It has three levels, the second across which spans a balcony. Fancy. Behind the house, which is visible from the plaza outside the chapel, is a small extension of their winemaking business. There is an entrance from the front and the back of the house. Just inside is the foyer, decorated and with seating to receive people from both entrances. The next room is the living one, with space for dining and a roaring fireplace. A door leads down into their basement, employed for general storage of food and miscellany. The second floor leads to a spacious study room and a door out to the balcony. A further staircase up goes to the bedrooms, one for each brother. Each has a double bed and some storage, with the left-hand room notably having a known root planter. It is a warmly decorated and quite pleasant home. Outside the walls of Skingrad is their vineyard, opposite Tamika's. It is equally vast, with rows of grapes growing and a covered barn at the far side, with apparatus for winemaking. David is less proficient at combat than his brother, but he puts up a fight with spells alongside pugilism. Right here. Yes, you. We need to talk. Yes. We can't talk here. Too public. Meet me behind the great chapel at midnight. I'll, I'll make it work. He wears a brown shirt, tan linens, and thick cowhide shoes, and carries some bread, his house key, gold, a rake, and a hoe. Gaston is more feisty. Hey, What's going on? No oh, oh. He has significantly more health and fights with his enchanted short sword as well as using magic occasionally. He wears a blue and green outfit and thick cowhide shoes. He also carries his house key and some gold and a rake and a hoe, like his brother. Of note, he wears a zero-weight black hood, one of the only few in the game. 
Other than their blood, they produce a different red liquid. Let's have a taste of that wine of theirs. First, let us indulge in the crimson delight of the Cerulli brothers' wine. An aromatic wine, nutty and with a hint of dry. Oh, wonderful. It is full and cherry with a balance of beefy. It would pair most excellently with a sweet roll. Now the magnificent Cerulli Brothers Vintage 415. Oh, you can tell this wine is fine indeed. Its scent is grapey and mellow, still keeping that nuttiness. <coughs> the flavor explodes in my mouth, full and round, robust and long. The fellow I met, Lucian, says it pairs most excellently with nightshade. <coughs> Let the NPCs Gaston and David Cirilli be NPC. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again in the next episode. We can't talk here. Too public. <laughs>